Hi, how's it going? Just a little quickie here. In the previous video, we selected our physical device. The next thing we're going to do is create a logical device. But before we do that, when we create the logical device, we are going to create queues. We're going to have two. We're going to have a present queue and a graphics queue. Graphics queue is done for rendering. Present queue is used for presenting things to the screen. The queue is kind of like an in to the graphics card. Um, things are like work is submitted on the queue. But before we do that, we can query our physical device to see which um, queue families it has and what capabilities they have. To start with, I'm just going to make a simple structure which will hold um, a bunch of indices. Okay, so there we have it. The two, um, the two major, if I can type, the two major um, Q family indices that we want. So let's say we have a graphics card. Let's say um, it has four Qs and Q number two, Q index number two might be good for graphics uh, work. And generally a graphics queue will also be good for uh, presenting, but I just want to make this as general as possible because, you know, Vulcan's philosophy is expect the unexpected. So that's what we're going to do. Now there's a little bit extra here. So we want to be able to track whether these things have been set. Um, and for that purpose, we're going to make these optional uh, fields. We can do this by um, including the optional header and then wrapping these as standard optional. Okay, now it is complaining because it says, hey, we, we don't have optional. And the reason for that is that this optional functionality is in C++ 17 and beyond. So we just go to the project settings, change the language standard to 17, and give it a second. And now we're good. Okay. So um, now we're going to have a function, which all it really does is just indicates whether um, these things have both been set. So we have a few things. We have this has value function for an optional field, which indicates whether something has been set. And we have this value field, which indicates the value of that thing. Okay, very straightforward. So now I'm going to create a function down the bottom, which will use this structure. Okay, cool. So what this function will do is we will look through the physical device, look at all the cues that it supports, check whether those cues are capable of doing graphics and presenting to the screen, populate this field, which stores the indices. So again, let's go with the example of four, right? So let's say Q index two is good. Q family index two is good for graphics. Q family index four is good for present. Then that will be stored in this structure and that will be passed out. Now, just to test, we're not gonna really use this for anything right now. This will be used um, in the next section, but for now, let's just go. Just call that, because I wanna just um, do some diagnostics on this. Okay, cool. So we're going to get all of the uh, properties of the Q families, which are supported. 
Yes, of course, because this should be the HPP version of that. Okay. And now let's just check how many Q families our device will support. Okay, fair enough. We'll run this and check it. Okay, cool. So it says we can support three Q families. Okay, that's nice to know. We only need one though. Now I just noticed as I was compiling that that it complained about is suitable. It said not every uh, branch returns a valid value, which is probably because it doesn't. If everything else falls through, then the device must be suitable. Just amend that there. Okay, great. So the next thing we want to do is we want to look in at each Q family and um, see if it's suitable. Okay, so now I wanna say what things does a Q family property structure have? So we go down to the documentation. We have these ones here. We have uh, Q flags, Q count, all of these. Um, Q count is the number of Qs which the Q family supports. And it says here, each Q family must support at least one Q. Okay, so we can kind of ignore that. It's not too useful, but it's this Q flag bit. So if we click into Q flag bits, we have a specification of the, the flag bits that we can support. So I'm just gonna copy that in. And while I'm at it, I'm also gonna grab what I had before for completeness. Okay, okay, so none of these things are super important, just the, the um, Q flag bits section. So here's how we can check this. Go Q family, Q flags, and we'll do a bitwise and with, now this is a little bit different because we're using the HPP version. But basically we go in the Vulcan namespace in the Q flags, Q flags enum, enum class. I'm gonna go sorry, the Q flag bits enumerator. Then we go E graphics, and this is checking whether, basically this is equivalent to this, um, this graphics bit. So if this is true, then um, index I works basically. So we can say, um, the graphics family is going to be set to I. And if that fails, then we'll just loop on to the next one. But um, if that's successful, so in other words, if, um, if we've now got a complete uh, set, then we can just break and return it at the bottom. So this is all good, but we may note that um, being able to present to the screen is not a separate thing. There's not a, a bit for that. Um, now that's a little more complicated because what we want to do is we've got a surf, well, this will come later. When we create a surface, we'll create a surface and then we'll check, can the device present to this surface? 
For now, we can take advantage of the fact that a Q family which can support graphics can probably support presenting as well. Unless we're working with like an, like an offline render farm or something, a graphics card can present to the screen. So we're just gonna simplify that for now. We'll kind of revisit that later. And also nice to know which one was chosen. So we'll print that out as well. Okay. I think that's all right. Let's run that. Okay, awesome. Cool. So as we can see, our system can support three Q families and the first one we get Q family zero, that works. Cool. So like I said, this is just a little quickie today. Um, getting ready for the next video in the series. I guess all I was going to say is just remember, just remember the way this works. Um, we have a graphics, like a graphics card and the graphics card can support a bunch of operations. It can support uh, graphics, general computation, memory transfer, sparse memory operations. Um, and in order to handle that, it has families of functions. Families of functions are called Q families and they are indexed by integers, zero, one, two, three. Which one of your Q families supports graphics? It's number seven, that's the one. Um, so I just really wanted to kind of demystify that. And um, yeah, this is it. Vulcan is fun. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.